fine. So let's get started. Uh, so in the couple of weeks back, uh, so there we have uploaded, uh, in fact, uh, before your exams, we have uploaded videos on the sensitivity analysis. So today we are supposed to take uh, the class activity discussion on sensitivity analysis. So before we uh, move on to the class activities, so I would like to uh, provide a brief summary on sensitivity analysis. So under this uh, chapter, we have discussed about uh, three main aspects. Uh, so they are, those are different variation in sensitivity analysis. The first thing that we have looked into, uh, we have looked into uh, the tool that is available in your spreadsheet package that is called data tables. So in fact, in that we discussed two variation called one-way data tables and two-way data tables. And thereafter, we discuss about uh, the goal seek command, another important capability that is available under the sensitivity analysis. We discuss that. And finally, we looked into a kind of comprehensive uh, capability that is, again, uh, comes under the sensitivity analysis. We call it scenario manager. So those, uh, those were the content uh, that I had discussed under the uploaded videos. Then uh, we start uh, the discussion on this sensitivity analysis. Basically, this is something that you are familiar even, I would say, from your A-levels. Or if not, probably in the second year management accounting, so you have exposed yourself to this sensitivity analysis, the different application, especially uh, under the CVP analysis. So you have, to a certain degree, you have touched upon this concept. Uh, so under this sensitivity analysis, basically what we do, we are going to looking at what is the impact that the change in a particular input would have on the model output. What is the impact uh, the change in a particular input or inputs would have on the output or outputs. So that's what we call the sensitivity analysis. So in that, uh, first we look at uh, what is the impact on the outputs when there is a kind of change in one input. So let's say for an example, if you take a kind of uh, CVP analysis scenario, so there you have the inputs of sales price, the variable cost, also the demand, the fixed cost. So it's a matter of taking these variables and working out the profit. So in that, you can see, for example, when there is a kind of change in the sales price, how it would impact the contribution of that particular scenario and the profit. So therefore, when you change the one input, what is the impact that it has on the output or outputs? To keep it simple, let's say, when you change the sales price, what is the impact that it has on the profit? Similarly, if you wish, you can change the variable cost per unit and see what is the impact that it has on the output. Likewise, you change one input of the model and see how it reflects on the output. And that's about the one-way data table. And when it comes to the two-way data table, so as the term suggests, what basically happens, so you can change two inputs simultaneously. So when you are doing that in a kind of manual environment, in maximum, you could have changed one variable and see what is the impact that it has on the output or outputs. But here, uh, this particular software package would help you with looking at uh, the change in a two input simultaneously and how it would affect on your output. So for an example, you can see in the same scenario what I had assumed earlier, if you take a kind of CVP analysis scenario, you can simultaneously change the sales price and the variable cost and see how it impacts. So what is the combined impact that would have on the profit? And that's an example for two-way data table scenario. As the term suggests, you can 
simultaneously change two variable and see how it reflect on the output. And thereafter, we have taken an example on that, the activity one, and we have discussed. In fact, we discussed two activities, uh, but just to take you through one of the activities what I have discussed. So you are given the information as to the Fernando Enterprises, variable cost, fixed cost, demand, and also the uh, price information is also given. And then you want to run a kind of sensitivity uh, when you change uh, the sales price, I believe, right? Yes, when you change the sales price, so you need to know what is the impact that it has on the profit. So that is what you are uh, given scenario. So when you are given a question of this nature, the most important thing is always working out the model. So the model development should come first. So accordingly, I have taken the sales price. It's assumed one variable cost was taken. So you can uh, store back to the original one and uh, fixed cost is given. It's given as uh, 300,000 I have taken. Demand also taken at the moment 10,000. And here when you are uh, getting this demand, uh, you need to be mindful that uh, because uh, so there is a particular condition that it says that if the prices of the product is greater than or equal to 130, demand will come down to 7,500. If the prices is less than 130, you could achieve the expected demand. So therefore, when you take this demand, you need to do that consciously. So in order to do that, you had to make use of your knowledge on if function. And there you took the logical test is if this price is uh, greater than or equal to 130, then the demand is turned out to be 7,500. If not, it's 10,000. So that's how you would take. So you can change these prices and see whether it works. Yes, it perfectly works. So thereafter, I have derived this profit. It's just a matter of uh, taking uh, the contribution per unit multiplied by the demand minus fixed cost. So that is about the first part. So when you are about to do a sensitivity analysis, first the model development comes. So as always has been. So we have developed that. Then we have moved on to this sensitivity analysis. Then here it takes, it asks us to see what is the impact on the profit if the price ranging from 100 to 150, even the incremental change is given, it is supposed to be five. So therefore, how you do, as you can see, first you would get the sales price. So you may list them down either in a column or it may be in a row. So you have the choice. If you wish, you can place them in row wise or otherwise you can take them in the column. So I might take it in the column. So it's 100. So once you take one figure, you can simply add the incremental change and you can simply drag that down. So here we have the sales prices. Then the next thing is about taking your output. Your output is profit. But here you need to adhere to some of the principles that in order to perform this sensitivity analysis, one of the important things that you need to do, you need to move over one column so in the input, you have placed it in the column H. So therefore, I'm going to move over one column. So it's column I. Then go up one row. Go up one row. So therefore, you can see that the input starts in row 42. I might go to row 41. And then I place equal. And I would refer that to the model. The model output. So it is profit. You can simply refer that to this and you can enter that. So now we are in the process. 
Now you can select the entire thing. The next step, see, when I'm selecting that, I have selected, uh, I have ensured that the output and all the inputs have been covered. So that is the necessary condition. Then you can go to this data, what if analysis, under the forecast section, you can see what if analysis and take that data table. Then it asks you, what is your row input cell? What is your column input cell? In case of a kind of one-way data table, you would either have the row input cell or column input cell. It is simply the way you structure. So you get this column input cell and you may uh, refer that from the original model that you had created. So it is the profit, so you would refer it from there, from the model. Then you can say, okay. Sorry, uh, mistake. Uh, so it's about selecting the input, right? You need to make the input, sorry for that. So you would go to this what if analysis data table, then it asks clearly the input cell, right? So your input in this case, it is not the output, the input is sales price. So I might refer to the sales price. Then I would say, okay, with that, you can see the relevant information comes. So it is exactly similar to what I have done earlier. And uh, that's what the question asks about. And also I have went one step further and I have figured out what is the kind of price that gives you the highest uh, profit. So in order to figure that out, you can use your knowledge on, you can simply apply this conditional formatting by selecting the relevant range, go to the condition, conditional formatting, and you can take this top bottom rule by default, the top 10 rule is there. There you can make it what is the top one, the highest one. So therefore you can see the most desirable price is going to be 125. It is not 150, but it is 125. Simply because if you exceed uh, the price more than 130, you know, uh, there is a kind of decrease in the demand. So therefore, it is going to be 125, which gives you the highest profit. So that's what we did there. So it's about the one way data table. Similarly, in the next activity, it was- Shams, sir, maybe this uh, regarding the input also better to explain them, no? So the input may be the change in variable, right? So not the other items. So for example, you are not taken the variable cost as an input. Yeah. So it's a selling price, right? Yeah, it's selling the reason price. for that, uh, we have selected that uh, selling price as the input sale. Ah, yes, sir. Sure. Calculate. Yeah. So here, uh, yes, thank you very much, Kalum, sir. So here you can see that uh, uh, I have taken this selling price. What was the reason for that? Because the question says that specifically, their marketing team has found the market prices for a similar product ranging from 100 to 150, and they want to do a sensitive analysis for the entire price range. So therefore the question is specified, what is your input? So the question clearly says, it is going to be the sales price. So that's why we have taken this sales price in accordance with that. The question had suggested it is variable cost. You need to take that and perform the sensitivity analysis. And also importantly, we can type any number here, right? So there's a no, uh, yeah. restriction whether you type 135 120 or anything within yes. that range right yes it may starting be. from 100 yes. to uh, given price yes so you may you can type any price so if the system automatically takes that even if you take like 160 over here so it still it works so again, uh, yes, uh, so you need not to maintain the order so whatever the thing that you type over here in the input so the corresponding profit figure would be provided. Corresponding profit figure would be provided, right? Right. So it's about the one-way data table. Then thereafter, the question expanded in activity two. 
In the activity two, it says that, uh, so just to show you the activity, uh, it says that with reference to the activity one above, suppose Fernando Enterprise want to uh, determine how annual profit varies as price varies from 110 to 170, incremental change is given and also the unit variable cost varies from 35 to 50, incremental change 2.5. Determine the optimal mix of prices and variable cost. Optimal mix of price and variable cost. What is the most desirable combination? So here you can see that the question specifies two inputs. So therefore you need to go by that. So what are the two inputs that is being identified? It is sales price and the variable cost. So if I'm just to do that originally, so I might have some space for that. So how we are supposed to perform that? So this time again, structuring is the pretty much important thing. Again, the model development comes first. So we have already developed the model. So therefore we can make use of that. Now you can place your inputs in columns and rows. So I might start with uh, the one variable that is sales price. The question says that uh, take that sales price changing from 110 to 170. Incremental change is also given, so I would adhere to that. But uh, you have witnessed that we need not to take them in a particular order, even whatever the amounts that you would put. So the system automatically take care. And similarly, the cost starting from 35. So you can get the incremental change 2.5 and it goes up until I, th I think uh, it's up to 50. Yes, it's 50, right? Okay. Now you can see that I have placed one input in the column while the other input is placed on the row. So therefore I have done it in a systematic way because I have ensured that the top left corner cell would remain there. I haven't started this 110 uh, from the row 54. I have gone one row down and I have started from row 55. So therefore I have intentionally uh, kept this upper left corner cell vacant. Now what you are supposed to do, once you place this input and output, sorry, inputs in this particular format, now you can go to this top left corner, the upper left corner, and refer that to the model output. Your model output is at the moment 45,000, so you would get that. Now we have a structure that, again, you may select the entire thing, to ensure that you have uh, included all the inputs and also the output. So once you select the relevant area, go to the data, the data table. So here you can specify the row input cell and the column input cell. So what we have uh, arranged in the rows, you can see in row wise what we have arranged, that is our variable cost. So I might go back to my original model and select that. Similarly, in the columns, what I have arranged, I have arranged the sales price. So therefore I might go to the original model and refer it. So that's all you are supposed to do and say, okay, see how quickly the output is generated. So it is something that you cannot imagine in a manual environment. So this is the comfort that it gives. Then they are asking for the kind of optimal one. So as usual, you may go to the conditional formatting, top rule, and ask for what is the highest one. The most desirable one is going to be the combination 170-35. So it is what gives you the greatest profit. So it's about the one-way data table and two-way data table. Now you can have uh, some questions on this. So now it's time for you to uh, get them clarified.
So better come up with the question if you have, since we have to uh, summarize that two more things. You would like to see one or two questions quickly. So if you have question, even at the time that uh, we are working out the question, you can type them in the chat and indicate that to us. So we will attend them right then and there. So please make sure that uh, come up with the question. The very purpose is to clarify the things. So because we have already done uh, the lectures on this, that is in the sense video recordings have been uploaded. So the purpose is to clarify your issues. So if you have issues, you better come up with then and there. Okay. So now I might uh, take you through the second important tool that we had discussed. It's about the goal seek command. So when it comes to the goal seek command, it is basically the other way round of sensitivity analysis. So why am I saying so? It is because in the sensitivity analysis using the one way data table and two way data table, you have seen that we specify a particular input and according to the change in that particular input, we used to witness what is the impact that it brings on the output. So in the data tables, what we did, we identified a particular input or inputs. And when there is a kind of change in these inputs, what was the effect on the output was observed. But here, how it basically works is, we are identifying a particular output. Having identified a particular output, we are looking for what is the input that it takes to achieve that particular output. Also, therefore, your starting point is this time, it's going to be the output. You start with the output and you are searching for a input. Hence, you can see that it is a kind of other way around, other way around. So here we have taken a kind of a simple scenario. So you are given a, a CVP analysis scenario where you identified the sales price, the variable cost is there, the unit. Hence, you can work out the total contribution. At the moment, you can see that the contribution is 10,000. Then you might come up with the question that, so what about 20,000 contribution? If I'm to achieve 20,000 contribution, what should be the sales price? So in order to achieve the contribution of 20,000 without changing other factors, what must be the variable cost? So when you come to this call seek, you can see that you can identify a change in only one input. You can change only one input and see that. So assuming all the other variables remain constant so you can see either in order to achieve this contribution of twenty thousand, what should be the sales price so there we assume variable cost and the units remain constant or you can see that in order to achieve this contribution of twenty thousand, what must be the variable cost assuming all the other information remain constant selling price and units right likewise then thereafter we have taken on an activity of that so it's a kind of uh, let me look at activity five what we have discussed so just to take you through so we discuss all the activities i might see like this so there you are given a kind of uh, scenario where you look at uh, the CVP analysis, the sales price is given, variable cost is given, fixed cost is given. And the question would require you to figure out how many units are needed to uh, sell to be break even. So in that, uh, I might get some original data. Here we have this, what you call the break even. So I might change some of this information. Let me change these units, say it's 10,000 units. So here at the 10,000 unit, you can see the profit is 1.5 million. 
So likewise, basically, you need to develop the model first, identifying the given input. You are given the inputs of price, variable cost, and the fixed cost is given. So therefore, you can assume a particular demand. I have assumed 10,000, and I have worked out the profit for that. And the most important thing is, you need to use the references as maximum because, so here everything depends on the relationships that you would create. So when you are getting this profit, make sure that you identify the, you refer that to the sales price and variable cost and identify the per unit contribution and get them multiplied by the demand. So the total contribution, then deduct fixed cost thereby the profit. So that's what you get. So therefore, everything is connected. Everything is connected. Now you can try this out. What you need to do, you can go to this data what if analysis take this goal seek option then it asks to set value so that is your uh, desired output you want to have a particular output and you need to set that so it is located in the profit set and what you want to set that for the value need to be zero you know at the break even the no profit, uh, neither profit, no loss. So you make it to zero. By changing what? In maximum, you can change only one variable. So this time they ask us, what must be the demand? So you refer to the demand. Say okay. So once you run that, you can see that the demand comes as 5,334. Demand comes as 5,334. So likewise, you can generate. Then it asks you in order to make a kind of uh, profit of 150, what must be the case? So again, I would change this figure because we are already there. So again, I believe that it is need not to do. Again, uh, you need to set this value to what? It's 150,000 profit by changing the demand. So at 6,000 units, you can achieve this output. So this is the essence of goal seek command. So we have some activities even in the class activities, then we can look into this further, right? So if you have any questions on this, again, we would like to attend that. If you have any. So I believe that it is something straightforward. Then the final one, what we have discussed, it's about the scenario manager and important capability. So in the previous two instances, what you have seen is that you can only deal with one input or in maximum two inputs. So that was your case. So in the one-way data table, only one input, two-way data table, two inputs goal seek only one input so therefore likewise you have only dealt with so far with kind of uh, one or two inputs but when it comes to this scenario manager so i would say that that is the most uh, comprehensive capability that is available under this uh, sensitivity analysis there you can go up to like 32 inputs you can simultaneously change 32 inputs and see what is the impact that it has on a particular output. So that is the capability what this particular tool would offer you. You can go up to 32 inputs. Even if you create different scenarios, so it would be the multiples. It would be the multiples. So therefore, in a given scenario, you can change up to 32 inputs simultaneously and see what is the combined effect that it has on the specified output or even outputs. So that is the capability this scenario manager would offer. So as the term suggests, basically what we do with this, we look for different scenarios. So when you are given a particular base case, 
So depending on that, you are creating different scenarios. So what would be the best case scenario? What would be the most likely scenario? And what would be the worst case scenario? Likewise, you are looking at different scenarios. For these different scenarios, what would be your output? So that's basically what you'll be looking at. You can see that. So when it comes to the environment, environment is quite turbulent. So in fact, you have witnessed recently with this corona pandemic. So it has proven, it has proven, right? So therefore, uh, it is better that when you are planning for something to have a different scenarios on mind. So not go with a particular scenario, but rather look for different scenarios and get, make yourself ready for that. So it is about the sensitivity analysis. So in that, uh, again, I would say the most important thing is it's about the model development. So once you develop the model, so you can accommodate uh, this scenario management. So here I have given information in activity seven. It's about a kind of investment that you would make and uh, the relevant information are being given for you to work out the NPV. So since we have done several NPV questions, I believe that this is something so easily that you can manage. And in fact, you would have managed them very easily. So uh, as I mentioned, the very uh, first thing what you need to do is you need to develop the model for the base case and thereafter you can look for scenarios. Here, as I mentioned that you can see three scenarios are there, the best case most likely and worst case. And for each scenario, we have identified three inputs. So this may be the most critical inputs. Maybe that the year one sales unit, annual sales growth, and sales price growth. So that is what we had identified. And the question asks you, forecast the cash flows and develop a model to find NPV for the about three scenarios. So then accordingly, you may first go and develop the model. So here the inputs being taken, then the outputs had been worked out. So the NPV was generated. So according to the base case, the NPV comes as this 585, 763.87. Having developed this model, what you need to do, you need to go to the data, the what if analysis, then the scenario manager. So at the moment we have the scenario what we have created but if i'm just to show you that again so i might delete that the cases what i have added then your starting point is going to be adding the different scenarios you can add them so here uh, let me start with the best case that is uh, best case scenario so let me close this because i want to see this input uh, cannot be seen yeah so these are the inputs. that's right I'm gonna take them little down So you may go to this uh, what if analysis, then the scenario manager. You can take the different scenarios, you can edit. The first one is the best case scenario. Best case. And the inputs, you need to specify that. So here, what are the inputs that we have? So the changing uh, variables. So the sales unit need to be taken. So I would specify that, make a reference and take comma thereafter sales growth. So you can take that as well. And finally, it's about the price growth. So take everything. So those are the changing sets. Now say, okay. Then what you need to do next, you need to feed the values. So the current values are showing uh, the sales unit, sales growth and price growth. And in fact, here, when I'm doing that, so in order to make the life easy, I have renamed 
uh, I have given the range name for these cells. So therefore, it is quite easy for me to feed the information. So the sales unit, 25,000. Sales growth, it's going to be 10%. Then it's going to be the price growth, 0 0.05. 0 0.05. So that is the first case you can add it. So you can go for the now the second scenario. It may be the most likely, most likely case. In the most likely case, again, uh, the inputs need to identify. It has automatically been taken since we have specified earlier B5, B6, and B11. Say OK. Again, the current values are given. You can replace that. 17,500. It's uh, 0 0.07. And the price growth, it's 0 0.02. Say OK. Two scenarios being added. The third scenario, it's about the worst case. Can add it. Again, the inputs are there. It's going to be 8,000 under the worst case. It's going to be 2% and it's going to be 0 0.005. Okay, now you have added all the three scenarios. Now you can ask for a kind of scenario summary. Then you need to specify what must be the output or outputs that you would want. So our output need to be in PV. So it has automatically taken at the moment. We can simply say, okay. So once you say, okay, you can see that the different scenarios are being generated. You can see the current values and these are the best case, most likely and worst case. So therefore, when you are going to take the decision, it would be better if you can uh, kind of see what are the probabilities of each of these case and get an weighted average figure and it will serve as the best NPV, best NPV. Say that the best case is having a chance of 50%, take it 0.5%. Most likely case, maybe 0. Point, uh, sorry, best case, it may be like 0.3%. Most likely case, maybe like 0. Point, uh, 5% and the worst case, it may be 0.2% or 20%. So if you identify this weight, then if you can multiply them by the, uh, the respective NPV of each of the scenario and get a figure, and that is going to be the most desirable NPV for the project. And that's how you make decision under uncertainty. So this is basically what we used to discuss in the last video. So now it's time for you to have questions. So we would like to answer them. Roshan, do we have any activity given to them to uh, practice this? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. So the activities are there. Shall we go to the straightaway activities? Sir? Yeah, that's better now because no questions is coming. Yeah, we are running out of time. Sure. Yes, better. Sure. So now let me uh, come out of the screen and uh, as usual, I would like that uh, someone to initiate. So take us through the first activity. Would like someone to initiate activity one without taking much time. Yes. Uh, quickly take us through the first one. The class activity. So it's an exam type question. Hopefully, you have attempted, and this is something up to you for sure. So we are here to facilitate. So, therefore, without taking much time, we would like someone to come forward and present that. Yes, got someone to initiate.
So I believe that it's a kind of important question. So better that uh, you would attempt that. Hopefully you have attempted. So uh, quickly take us through. So we have three more, three questions. So without taking much time, yes. Would like someone initiate. Yes. How about Hasini? So have you attempted that? Or oh, Hilma? If you had attempted. Yes, sir, that uh, it seems uh, no one has yeah. attempted. Yeah. So in that case, Soshan, let them to work. We don't mm -hmm. have to show them answers and no, no need to upload the answers. Okay. Let them to work and understand it because you have clearly explained everything now again mm -hmm. uh, rather than the video, even this live lecture. So I hope they got the idea. So let them to work. Mm -hmm. And we will be testing those things in the examinations. Yes. So yeah. we don't have to explain. I mm -hmm. hope they got the idea they know all the answers so that's why they don't want to discuss yeah. so let, uh, let them to work individually yeah. and come up in the final exam and see yeah yeah so are we having anything else to discuss so are we having the assignment also today uh, uh no sir so at the moment no probably we are going to uh, have it in the next class uh, two more activities are pending so probably we are having them uh, uh, most probably after the next class the first one okay yeah so uh if now the one is telling that because of the exam they were not able to do that yeah. so we give them a chance to explain the answers next week hmm. during our starting point of the session meantime yeah. we will take the uh, uploaded material as well today's uploaded material no yeah sure sir okay uh, then we may do it like that so we would like to uh, give you the opportunity since you had kind of exams up until the last so we believe so the next week you may come up with the answers so straight away we may start with the answers and followed by the uh, New session discussion yes so then we may do accordingly uh, then uh, for the day we can stop at this uh, point Roshan, i think we have uh, left out with three sessions no another uh, yes, sir. We have on 29 and, uh, and one more topic, and then macros. Yes, at least we can go by two sessions. No macros, yes. Uh, ma uh macros, uh, so we have planned it like this uh, the solver that we are going even for 29th, yeah. so the half of that being discussed. Mm. So, another two applications we'll be discussing, and thereafter, we are taking on sixth uh, mm. the macros. Yeah, uh, thereafter, one week would left, uh, so we can take it uh, for the discussion of a past paper or something. Yeah, in that case, I think uh, we will ask them to come to the university, no? Yes, for the final one. one. Yeah, yeah final the, one. Final yeah. one is the uh, mock paper discussion. They are like they can come to the university and discuss that. Yeah, sure. So we'll have all the lectures uh, in this platform, uh, the rest of the lectures and the final one. So we'll uh, be having you know physical environment. So we will meet in the uh, kind of uh, labs that is allocated. Fine. Uh, so if so, then uh, for the day, we can stop our discussion at this point. So then uh, see you in the next class. Hello, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. Right. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.